Now on News 11's Evening Edition, Catholics all around the world are celebrating a new pope. Details on the church's new leader from the Vatican. Plus, I'm News 11's Michael Coliani, and I spoke with Monsignor Richard O'Keefe earlier this afternoon. I'll give you his take on today's events in a live report. And Catholic followers in the Imperial Valley are also reacting to the news from the Vatican. It's all ahead in our team coverage. The evening edition starts now. Your number one source for news in the desert southwest. This is News 11 Evening Edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Archuleta. And I'm Christy Rodriguez. Today, Cardinal Jorge Borgalio was elected as the new pope, taking on the name Pope Francis. News 11's Jay Gray is overlooking the Vatican tonight and begins our team coverage. Jay, what's the latest? Good evening. Just after 2 in the morning here in Rome, and there's still an energy here, a palpable feeling that has come after the election of a new Pope Francis I and a new chapter in the long and storied history of the Catholic faith. At the Vatican, there is now a new Pope as white smoke poured from the rooftop of the Sistine Chapel. The faithful who filled St. Peter's Square, many who had been waiting for hours in the rain, erupted in celebration. And about an hour after the smoke first appeared, French Cardinal Jean-Louis Torrent walked to the balcony and announced, We have a Pope. Then minutes later, Argentinian Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio, now Pope Francis I, greeted the world. Buonasera. Francis I, and it's a fitting name since he is the first Latin American Pope and first Jesuit to serve. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, said to us tonight, I'm going to sleep well and something tells me you will too, and we will. We'll sleep well tonight knowing that the church is in good hands. The hands of a man described as humble and a champion of the poor. As a cardinal, Bergoglio lived in a sparse apartment, not the official residence, cooked his own meals, and instead of the traditional chauffeur, rode the city bus. And as he left St. Peter's as the new pope, cardinals say he stayed true to those tenants. As the last bus pulls up, guess who gets off the bus? Pope Francis. So I guess he told the driver, that's okay, I'll just go with the guys in the bus. So he's a, he's a wonderfully simple man who now inherits an incredibly complex and difficult job. Now, tomorrow, an amazing meeting between Pope Francis I and Pope Emeritus Benedict. It's something that hasn't even been an opportunity uh, for the last 600 years or so, two living popes actually getting the chance to talk. Later in the day, he will celebrate Mass with the Cardinals in the Sistine Chapel. On Saturday, he plans to meet with the media, and then next Tuesday is his initiation, his Mass, to inaugurate him here at the Vatican. That is the very latest live. I'm Jay Gray. Now back to you. All right, Jay, thank you very much. Hopefully now he can get some rest. Mm -hmm. well, with the election of the first pope from South America, how will this decision affect our local Latin community? News 11's Michael Coliani spoke with Monsignor Richard O'Keefe, who is the pastor emeritus for the Immaculate Conception Church in Yuma. He continues our team coverage live from the church with O'Keefe's reaction. Michael. John Christie, I'm standing here in front of the Immaculate Conception Church where I spoke with Monsignor Richard O'Keefe earlier this afternoon. Now, when I spoke with O'Keefe last month, he told me he was hoping for the election of a pope from the Latin world, and today he got his wish. In a monumental decision, the papal conclave elected the first non-European, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, to lead the Catholic Church in over a thousand years. He is the 266th pontiff to be selected, and Monsignor O'Keefe of the Immaculate Conception Church believes he is the right man to lead the Catholic Church into the future. The Lord sends the right person to lead the church. As a result of that, you'll see a, an increased uh, sense and a renewal of uh, the people going back to the very basics in the church. With the growing influence of South America on the Catholic religion, O'Keefe considers this a significant moment for Latinos. It's huge for, for uh, all the Latin American countries, and uh, they are uh, very loyal to the church. They'll have a big influence on the direction of the church uh, during the coming years. In Argentina, Bergoglio was known for the work he has done to help the poor and malnourished in his country, and O'Keefe believes that the new pope's humility and strong belief in helping those in need will serve him well. He was in the forefront of uh, 
all of the the uh, different uh, confrontations with regard to uh, uh, social justice and of course that's one of the main topics that we we see is going to uh, affect all of us here while he was taken by surprise by the appointment the monsignor says the only emotion he feels is one of happiness i'm happy i'm happy that we have a uh, a pope that will lead us with a great sense of uh, holiness and spirituality. Now, O'Keefe says with the election of Francis I, he believes this will open more doors for Latin influence in the Vatican. Reporting live from the Immaculate Conception Church in Yuma, I'm Michael Coliani, News 11. All right, thank you very much, Michael. While the world is definitely reacting to the news given today at the Vatican. That's right, and here in the desert southwest, a local church is excited to hear the new pope shares their namesake. News 11's Aisha Morales spoke to parish members today. She joins us live in the studio and continues our team coverage. Aisha, what did they have to say? John Christie, the parish members we spoke to at St. Francis Catholic Church and school in Yuma are excited and hopeful for the future of not only the Catholic faith, but for the world coming together in unison. As we've heard, the newly elected Pope is the first ever from the Americas and the first from outside Europe in more than a millennium. In talking to a couple members of the St. Francis Parish in Yuma and some local residents, it seems collectively many are excited for the change. They say they are hopeful that Pope Francis the first if it carries out the values of the church and makes a difference in the world. Principal Susan Bostick of St. Francis School says they are honored to share a namesake with the new pope. When we heard Francis, we're like, ah, we have somebody up there with our name. First, first Francis, um, he is a Jesuit, he's not a Franciscan. So that was exciting for us. I had lots of texts coming in right away and congratulations on your new namesake pope. So we were really excited. The kids were really excited, especially our third graders. When we told them, they were just like, yay! So everybody's excited. Just going in now to Adoration Chapel, to, and I'm going to dedicate my hour for him, for his prayers, for his work. It was also interesting to have heard from non-Catholics around town who are drawn to the historical day and are just as interested to see how Pope Francis I carries out his new role. Christy, John, back to you. All right, very exciting indeed. Thank you very much, Aisha. Catholics in the Imperial Valley also celebrated today after the new Pope announcement was made. News 11's Melrose Bosco caught up with some of them and continues our team coverage. Catholics all over the world are celebrating that they have a new shepherd, and here locally, they're even more excited that it's come so soon. I'm so excited. I, I feel like seeing everybody here waiting for Mass, just. You know, hearing that news was so, you felt the Holy Spirit. I feel it right now. It's uh, exciting to be, he's a Latin American, he's from Argentina, so it's like, wow, it's first time in history, and it's exciting to see what's going on. In El Centro, Catholics celebrated with a Thanksgiving Mass after they heard the news that Cardinal Jorge Bergoglio was chosen, now known as Pope Francis. As soon as he was elected Pope, we had a new Pope. We wanted to celebrate Holy Eucharist, to pray for him, uh, to pray for the Universal Church and pray for everybody who, in fact, who has been watching this, whether they believe in Christ Jesus or not, that they might come to know this wonderful Savior that we have, Jesus Christ. You know. Oh yes, that's why we all came to Mass here to pray for the new Pope, and and um, you know the Holy Spirit was there to guide the cardinals in making this decision, and we're all very supportive of our new Pope. Pope Francis is 76 and was the Archbishop of Buenos Aires. Latin America is home to an overwhelming portion of the world's Catholics. I mean, I guess that's what God wanted. You know, he's going to be the man for the job. So it doesn't matter really where he's from as long as he's, you know, his mission's the same. It has to be the Holy Spirit because no, it was someone perhaps that no one had thought was going to uh, be elected Pope, the successor of St. Peter. And so quickly, I guess this uh, teaches us that, that the Cardinals were united and uh, they must have been attentive to the Holy Spirit. And so it's awesome. Now the next thing for the Pope is the installation. In El Centro, Melrose Bosco, News 11.